Hey, great day, Coach Mike Husson. I want to talk to you today about the 10 fundamentals of powerful persuasion. You know, one of the most important things I will share with you as regarding presentations is wrapped around preparation. It's not so much just the presentation, the outline, how it's written that makes the difference. It's all a combination of things. However, this is one of the most powerful and important areas of giving a great presentation. You have to set yourself up, you have to be prepared. And one of the great things about these fundamental ideas is it'll give you a foundation of what to make sure that you're looking for before giving your presentation. My simple recommendation is print this out make notes on it on a scale of one to ten go through it before you walk into a presentation and when you finish your presentation sit down and go through it again and my recommendation beyond that is do that right away in other words let's say you're at a home giving a presentation you walk out you get in your car whatever the case is and you take five minutes and you go through it and scale yourself on a one to ten how were you in each one of these areas so Let's quickly go through this, and <clears throat> we'll obviously embellish on these over time, but I wanna make sure that we're extremely clear on this most important facility when it comes to delivering great presentations. The very first thing you have to ask yourself is, do I have the belief? So a belief is something that you have certainty about. Are you certain about what you're selling? Do you believe in your company? Do you believe in your product? And do you believe in yourself? So you must believe in what you're offering is important and it will have a major impact on the people's lives that you're delivering to. In order to affect others, you first must be affected. Do you believe in the value that your service brings as a real estate agent? Do you understand its, its depth and what it can do for people and how it can change their lives in every aspect? You know, this is one of the most important investment decisions anybody will ever make. And so if we're not on path with that, if we're not congruent in that belief in that belief system, we're not gonna get our ideas across. We're not gonna get them to sign the contract and people will buy your belief. I was just the other day talking um, on the phone with some clients and actually did a training for a group of people. You may be, You may have even been on the call yourself. But there was a woman that I was speaking to about a house. It was about, I think, a one and a half million dollar property. And she said to me, and I'm not talking out of ego here, but she said to me, she goes, you really believe in what you're doing. You sound pretty darn confident. I'm paraphrasing what she said. And I said, well, this is what I do. This is my livelihood. This is what I believe in. So guys and gals, make sure that you believe in your belief systems is the next area. When you walk into a presentation, you have to establish a powerful presentation posture, as I like to call it. A powerful presentation posture. And that posture first starts inside of here. It starts in your heart, it starts in your mind. And some of the things that you could do to create that and make sure that it's working for you is to have some great affirmations, such as, as I wrote down here, I am a powerful and effective and people enjoy listening to me. I am powerful and effective and people enjoy listening to me. If you walk into a presentation and you say, well, I'm not really certain about myself. If you walk into a presentation and you say, hmm, I'm not sure how effective I'm gonna be with these people because they were pretty challenging on the phone or you don't feel that people are going to enjoy what you're going to have to say because you seem like you're or, uh, like other people or you sound like other people this is not going to work guys and gals you've got to walk in with the posture of your presentation and that is i am powerful and effective and people enjoy listening to me number two i am humorous you don't have to be a joke teller or comedian to be humorous just a simple smile a relaxed enjoyable smile brings humor to the situations that you're involved in very typically a matter of relaxing a matter of just going along don't be so 
firm in your opinions, that cuts down all possibilities of having fun and being humorous. The next one is, I am persuading. I want to say, say this about persuasion. You know, a lot of people believe that persuasion is not a good thing that that's not their business, they're not in sales, they're not out to persuade people to make a decision. Folks, we are in the persuasion business. And frankly, every single day, every which way we look, we are constantly being persuaded. I don't know about you, but when I drive down the street and I see all the billboards and I see all the signs and everything going on, the flashing open, we're closed, whatever it is, we're always being persuaded by something, whether it's the name of a business or a sign telling us to, to, to make a call in case you have a broken toilet. Okay, whatever the case is, we are constantly being persuaded. We're be, be, being persuaded by our media methods, such as TV, social media, etc. We're constantly being bombarded with opinions, ideas, people who want to get their thoughts across to us. That is a way of persuading us to either believe or buy into something that we have not either, either bought into or believe in in the past. And take a look at what your children do. If you have any kids or know people who have kids, they are the most powerful persuaders in the world as far as I'm concerned, all right? So I enjoy persuading people. Let's talk about the next point here, your physiology, your physiology. At the end of the day, folks, you've got to utilize everything that you have, how you sit in your chair, how you look into people's eyes, how you use your hands, how you gesture is very, very important. So you gotta utilize everything that you have. If you're slouched over and you're uncertain and people will buy what they see, and it doesn't mean that they're gonna buy you because you are slouched over and frowning and not certain about your body language. They're gonna buy body language and that's a good 70 to 90%. 70 to 90 percent of communication skills is our body language on the stage remember you're on stage at this point you're presenting your service whereas you can make if you get a contract signed and you walk out there get that property sold you can make yourself four five six seven ten fifteen twenty thirty fifty a hundred thousand dollars or more in some cases and so as a result, you gotta own the stage. You're on stage and it's show time, as I like to say. The next thing is the more you move, the more you impact people. Now, I am not in the place of sitting at a presentation and jumping around a lot versus myself when I'm presenting on a stage in front of a live audience. It's a bit different modality. However, at the end of the day, it's very important that we move ourselves in a, in a certain way, in a more powerful way. We don't have to be all over a stage to, to, to move powerfully. We could be sitting down and we could use our head, we can use our gestures, we can use the pen. There's a number of ways to, to move with impact, all right? The next thing is, let's talk about some rules of physiology. You've gotta be resourceful. And folks, that comes down inside. And you gotta pull that out. You gotta pull out all the resources. This is when you're, again, going back, utilizing everything, you're on stage, and you've got to be resourceful. If you walk in, or excuse me, before you walk into a presentation and you've got a headache, or you just got off a terrible call that, that a deal clo uh, didn't close because it fell apart. Whatever the reason, you may have an argument with your spouse or your kid, something happened that was radically interrupted your whole thought pattern you got to now dig in and you got to be resourceful with your body language which will change the communication that you have with other people number two is you got to be relaxed and enjoyable again don't go in with the attitude that you're going to be very firm on your opinions about the value of somebody's home walk in be relaxed enjoyable have a nice smile on your face and really go through the process the next thing is you've got to be flexible. You know, flexibility, what I learned years ago, flexibility is power. And when you're flexible, it gives you the opportunity to have an open mind. And when you can be flexible in your physiology, in other words, where you're moving in congruency with your prospects on the other side of the table, then you're gonna have a more enjoyable and a greater outcome as a result of that. 
And you got to be dramatic sometimes and humorous. Again, you've got to hold yourself to a place where I can be dramatic. In other words, somebody says, well, you know, Mike, uh, I want to list it at $50,000 more than what you suggested. And my drama says, you're kidding me. $50,000 more. Oh my gosh. Can you tell me why you feel your property is worth $50,000 more than your competition? So adding a little bit of drama with your voice, your tone, your physiology brings a lot of value. The next point here, number three, is know your outcome. Know your outcome. Unconsciously, you will produce if you keep reminding yourself of your outcome. Now, I got a caveat here, and you've probably heard me say this in the past. Don't be attached to it. Know what it is, but don't be attached to it. Know what it is, but don't be attached to it. I'm going to repeat that. Know your outcome, but do not be attached to it. The question is, why? You say, be, know your outcome, but you say, don't be attached to it. It's very simply this. If we're so attached, let's say, as an example, our goal is to get a contract signed. And when we get a contract signed, God willing, it's going to sell. And when it sells, what are we going to receive? That's right. We're going to receive a commission. A lot of folks walk into presentations with commission breath. They have this notion that they're, they're already thinking about cashing the check. Oh, I got a listing appointment. I haven't had one in five years. And all of a sudden, this commission is going to pay all their bills off and it's going to take care of them for the next week or two. So their goal and their mindset is wrapped around that particular outcome. What happens, guys and gals, is when you focus on your outcome and you're attached, let me say it this way, when you're attached to your outcome, which is that commission check, you're going to fail to be able to communicate inside of your presentation. You're not going to listen carefully. They're going to say things and you're going to miss on them. You're not going to be able to respond in the appropriate manner simply because you're so worried about getting that commission because maybe you are desperate. Maybe you are hungry. I get that, but don't be attached to the outcome. Go do your job. As it is said in, a, in the world of airline pilots, fly the plane. Just simply fly, fly the plane. Go do your job and keep that coming always. Again, know your outcome, okay? Know your outcome, but don't be attached to it. The next thing is rapport. Number four here, rapport. Rapport is the ability to care about your audience. I liken it that way, meaning that when somebody says, when you ask a question and somebody gives you a response, you should say, you should repeat back what they say. That shows you care about them. If you're at a presentation and you say, Nancy, how many bedrooms does this have? And they say, three bedrooms, exactly, three bedrooms. When you move, where are you planning on moving to next? We're going to West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach, good for you. What takes you there? Well, we want to go up there for the kids and we want to be closer to work. Close to the kids, closer to work, good for you. It's a great way to build rapport, know and care about your audience. Number two is pace your audience, meaning that in the very beginning of creating rapport with somebody, be like them, okay? Be like them. You may have heard me say this before. When somebody answers the phone, hello, don't go, hi, my name is Mike. No, say, hello, this is Mike. You say the word hello. They say hi, you say hi. They say it's a great day, you say it is a great day. Rapport with them, connect with them. Once people connect with you, which happens very typically, and I'll go there in a second, in the first 30 seconds or sooner, quite frankly, is when they start to listen more to you. They start to listen more to you and they start to listen more to you means that they're answering your questions and you're pursuing and you're going down the path of the conversation with them. Now, once they are engaged with you because now they like you because you are like them, right? Then you can start to begin pacing them down your path. I'll give you an example. I'm a driver. If I want to pace another driver or an amiable, expressive, or analytical type personality style, I'm going to start out like they are. Once they connect, I'll give you the better example is if I'm talking to a, an amiable, okay? And they say, hello, this is Nancy. And I go, I can go, hi, Nancy, this is Mike. It's a great day here in the world, okay? It's going to freak them out. They're going to, it's going to break rapport right away. However, if I go, hello, Nancy, my name is Mike and I'm with ABC Realty, and the reason I'm calling is because. 
she's going to hear me the way she sounds. She's going to hear me the way she sounds. Now, once I start gaining momentum with that conversation, I might do it in the first one, two, three, maybe even four questions that I'm going through on my, on my script presentation. And once that occurs, once she starts going through with me, then I'm going to start picking up the pace, getting back to my driver. I'm not going to go there fully, but I'm going to maintain my posture so I can show her that I know what I'm doing. It's very important that you pace your audience, start with her and lead them to where you want to be. Number five is manipulation of your audience. That's what they're paying you for. People want to be sold. You don't believe it, believe it. They want to be sold. They invited you for a particular reason. They invite you for a cup of coffee. They didn't invite you to come and look at the backyard. Say, oh, that's a pretty yard. They want to know what you're going to do to help them achieve their goal. They want a result. And you're that person that they believed in when they first set that appointment that's going to come by to help them accomplish that particular result, whatever it is for them. Know that it's going to be a part of the manipulation process. So a couple of points here. Ask questions. Wait for an answer and respond. I don't have it written here, but write that down in your notes. Ask questions. Wait for a response. Repeat what they say and go on to your next question. Okay? Very, very important. You want to ask questions. Telling is not selling. Asking questions is true selling. Been around for a hundred years that statement and it's true to face. People want to know that you know what you're doing and they know that because you're asking questions. If you just walk in and you start you start engulfing people with statements and comments and oh this is a beautiful home versus this is a beautiful home how long have you lived here this is a beautiful home when did you last paint the garage whatever the case might be understand that asking questions is a very powerful part of manipulating your audience and your clients all right again it's not a bad thing guys don't say oh mike i'm not owning a manipulator i'm not a manipulator that's our business okay not in a bad way at all it is the nature of what we do again why because that's what people want that's why they're hiring us they want somebody that's going to come in and manipulate not only them but they want to know that if i if they do sign up with me then i'm going to manipulate and persuade the buyers and the other agents that walk through that house to buy it all right so get over it if that's on your mind okay the next point is break the pattern, break their thoughts, interrupt them. Okay. Sometimes when we're talking to people, they say something off the wall, right? And I just like to respond with, you know, that's a great question. We'll get back to that in a minute. That's a very simple way to break a particular pattern. Okay. Somebody says, well, Mike, you know, before you go on, how much do you, how much is your commission? That's a great question. We'll get to that in a quick minute. May I continue please? All right. No, no, but wait, I, I want to know, I want to know what your commission is because if all of these things are sounding great, but if, you know, at the end of the day, you know, how much do you charge because I don't have a lot of money to pay you or I don't want to pay you a big commission. You know what? That's a great question, Mr. Seller. And I'm going to get there in a minute. Is that okay if I continue my presentation and I'm going to show you the value of what I'm going to do to make it worth your while. Make sense? Sound fair? Whatever you say there. All right. Be totally associated with what you're talking about and you will get your audience associated. Again, I believe this point right here goes home to belief. You got to be totally associated with what you're doing. You got to know and believe. I'll give you an example. And it's a very powerful example that I believe changed the direction of my business and the ones that are using this. But more importantly, when you get this, what does it mean? And that is when you go through as an example, when I first started, I started going through my presentation and then I would present before I asked, even asked them to sign the contract, I would actually present my plan of action. So I'd go through my presentation, get agreement on price, and then I would say, now let me tell you what I'm going to do to get your house sold. And I would go through my marketing plan of action. You all know what I'm talking about, or you will anyway. So anyway, so I would go into that straight away, okay? And what I learned from that is when I go through that list of those, that list of things that I'm going to be doing to get their home sold, I started to become really associated to it because that's what they wanted to know what I was going to do. In other words, 
if I said I'm going to prospect three hours a day to find buyers and sellers for their home, that was what they wanted me to do. And as a result, I became associated to that action, right? So you have to be totally associated. In other words, your belief that by prospecting three to four hours a day is going to generate some extra buyers amongst everything else that you're doing in order to get that house sold. Your association to what you do, your belief in what you do is more powerful than the written word at any level, more powerful than anything that you could ever imagine. So be associated to what you're talking about. If your passion is the price and you know it and you believe it and you have done all the possible research that you can and they want to buck that system, you can make a choice. And your association to the value that you're bringing to the table and them not agreeing with you gets you to win the deal. How? Because you simply look at them, Mr. Seller, did you want me to tell you the truth or did you want me to tell you what you want to hear? Really, what would you prefer me to do? and you shut up at that point, right? That's being associated to your belief, your, your knowledge about what you're talking about at that point. I'm gonna tell you now, get that particular area down on your presentation, very important. Okay, all of these techniques and fancy ways of presenting, fantastic, critically important. I'm not even touching, I'm skipping on the, the tip of the iceberg with this stuff. But the, when you go into talking about price as an example, the biggest thing that's on their mind potentially next to your commission and what you're gonna do, this is a very important area for you to be really associated with guys and you gotta do it. The next point here is build pressure and releasing causes impact, okay? Pressure and releasing. Pressure is, you said you need to be there in 30 days, correct? Yeah, yeah, we need to be there in 30 days. Great, I'm gonna be there for you to make this happen. Pressure, be there in 30 days. Release, me providing my service, my value, my presence, my authority, my posture releases that pressure, okay? So you get it up there. You can create pressure and tension in a room that with people, and people want to be pressured, okay? They don't, in, the, in a way that's not bad. I don't mean that they don't want to be forced to do something, because frankly, I'm not going to force anybody to do anything. I'm not in the convincing business. What I am in is and I'm in the persuading and manipulation business based on their goals and their motivation. Based on their goals and their motivation. If their motivation is low, I can stand on my head with million dollar bills between my toes, ain't going to make a difference for them to make a decision to do business with me. Well, for some people it might. I know it for me. But you know what I mean, right? But people want to know that you're you're fervent, you're a believer in what you're doing, and by creating that pressure, you, you know, listen, Bill, Mary, you said you wanted to be there by the end of the summer, by the beginning of the fall, by the end of December, whatever the time frame is, and you want to price it at a price that's going to cause it to be on the market two to four months longer than that, if it all if it sells at all? Are you kidding? Come on, guys. Can we get back to reality here for a minute? Well, no, Mike, we want to really move. Great. I'm going to handle it for you. Listen, I'm going to do my very best to get you the very best market value for your property. You do believe that, don't you? Yeah, we do, Mike. Great. Get me to work now. Go ahead and sign the contract, please. So there's pressure, but then there's release. Okay? And people enjoy that. I mean, you might think that they're not going to like that. No, they love that. Because here's what you're selling, guys. You're selling your belief. Again, I, you know, for I could probably just cut all this other stuff out, just focus on beliefs, and I think it'll be pretty sufficient, close to 99.9% .9 of the time. But this all intertwines, okay? This all intertwines, which thus leads us back to belief. That's why it was the very first thing. All right, people ex are excited about that. Just like watching a great movie, we all get excited. We're under pressure, okay? And then, then we're all excited about it at the end of the movie, the last 10 minutes of that movie where everything starts to come out and everybody's smelling roses. It's unbelievable, all right? Very, very important. Number six is behavior flexibility. Behavior flexibility. If you try to do something and it doesn't work, try something else, all right? 
if you're trying to do something and you try something else if you're speaking to a wife and you're not you're not acknowledging or you're partly bringing in the husband let's say as an example and it's not working with her adjust to him put the weight on him bring her into the fold but keep it lighter than you were initially that's a way to change to do something different okay if you're if you're in an uncomfortable situation in your space when you're sitting down say mr seller i would appreciate the opportunity to be able to stand up now that's changing something okay if you try something that doesn't that's not working for you just simply try something else you don't want to change the dynamic or the layout of your presentation you just want to try maybe a different attitude maybe a different physiology move you want to change the way you're communicating just very simple you don't necessarily want to change the words or the structure of what your goal is because that's your path that's your 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 track that you're running on sometimes we need to interrupt some of those things and move on to another thing you've got to be delivery flexible in delivery and emotions the VAC stands for visual auditory and kinesthetic visual auditory and kinesthetic so you heard about personality styles this is another layer of that area where you might be talking to people and they say you know Mike um, it you know I feel that you can do the job I'm just not really sure because of this that or the other thing that is what we call a kinesthetic person because they use the word feel or they might say you know Mike I hear you but I don't quite understand what you mean by my house being a lot less expensive than everybody else's when I put all of this work into it they're an auditory or they might say you know Mike I see what you're saying but I just don't quite get it why is my house worth a lot less than everybody else's when I put in that brand new kitchen all right so when you hear these types of words you got to respond in like kind in other words, you've got to deliver to those emotions. You know, Bill, I understand how you feel. You know, Nancy, I hear you. I get it. I understand that people are spending more on other homes, but it, those are bigger homes, whatever you're going to do there. But you're going to use the words, I hear you, the auditory. You know what? I understand and I see what you mean. I see what you mean okay watch what I'm going to talk about now so I'm going to use the word see and I'm going to use the word watch because these are visual words that I'm going to be using so when you're delivering look to hear that's why when you're let me go back to one point when you're focused on your outcome you're not going to hear some of these things they're going to say things and you're not going to hear them now you might be saying well Mike I've never delivered at the level that you have how am I going to know when they're going to come around if you know what to look for you'll find them eventually okay if you know what to look for you will find them eventually you may have to go through 5 10 maybe even 15 presentations to start picking up on some of these maybe 30 I don't know don't worry about it just listen for them kinesthetic is feeling okay there it's a you know it's a feeling emotion audio uh, aud audible or auto um, audio is a is an auditory factor okay and they're going to use words I hear you I hear what you're saying okay and then the visual obviously is I see what you're saying or I don't see this happening at all all right you know I understand you don't see this happening at all but don't worry about it I'm here to make it happen for you can you see by the actions can you see by the actions that I'm going to take on this marketing plan of action that I will increase the chances of getting us sold Oh, and I can see you now, Mike. I, I can see you in action, making those phone calls, knocking on those doors, doing those open houses. Open houses? Are you kidding? <laughs> I don't do open houses. May I tell you why? Okay. But anyway, you know where I'm going here. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, very, very powerful ways to understand and flexibility. And do the unexpected. Okay. I mean, I can't tell you. There's so many times. And I, it's very difficult sometimes to explain what unexpected is, except just let it happen naturally okay hey can you give me a glass of water please hey make sure there's no ice in there all right I do that all the time make sure because I've, I've learned as a speaker not to drink 
uh, water or any liquid with ice in it or especially coffee because it, it, it changes the way you sound and it changes your voice. But do things that are unexpected with people and that will be okay, okay? Listen, if you sound like you feel or you, or you get that you may have screwed up on something, listen guys, I really blew it, okay? And they're gonna, you blew what? You, you just admitted that that's something unexpected. Most people won't say they blew it if you did blow it or something. It doesn't have to be extravagant, but it could have been something. You could have missed a whole series of questions that you skipped over because you were so darn nervous. But you say, Mr. Seller, Mr. Seller, I just blew it. I forgot to go through these other questions. Can I go back to them, please? They're going to say yes, of course. But it's unexpected because most people don't say those things. They don't admit their 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 um, idiosyncrasies. They don't admit that they're not perfect. They want to seem perfect. Okay. I just say do your very best to look the best that you can and do your very best in your presentation. And the unexpected is doing things such as being honest with people, I think is a very powerful way of being unexpected. That's a power of flexibility. Number seven, challenge your audience. Okay. Set up preframes. What does this mean to you? What will it do for you? As an example, preframes are ways to preframe to the future, very typically, or what we call future pacing. That's a way to get into frames of the way people think. All right. So as an example, I might be looking at them going to West Palm Beach and I start painting the picture for them if they're a visual. OK, as an example. And Mr. Seller, can you imagine what is it going to be like when you guys get to Palm Beach? Finally, you've been trying this for a year already. And I'm here to tell you, we can get this done in 60 to 90 days if you allow me to get to work for you. Okay, so pre-framing their experiences or another way to pre-frame is when you walk into a presentation. And this is the better example, I feel, because a lot of times most agents don't do this or any speaker publicly or otherwise very typically don't do this. They just start it out. But most trained speakers will do this. They they know to do this. And that's what we've been taught. Now, I hope that you're going to do this. I know I do it. And what I'm going to do tonight, Mr. Seller, is I'd like to walk you through what I'm going to do to get us on this right page together. So I prepared our my presentation and I put it in writing. And what I'd like to do is go through what I'm on my presentation. And there's a chance that I'm going to answer about 99.9% .9 of all of your questions. And all I would ask is if anything comes up, please hold it until the end, until I finish, because there's probably a good chance I will have answered it. Otherwise, please make a note of it and I'm, I'll make sure that I address it. Sound fair? Now, I just pre-framed what I'm going to be doing. I'm framing up my presentation. I'm preparing them for what to expect out of this situation. Make sense? So pre-frames are very important. And the challenge here for the client, the prospect, is that they're going to listen to you. That's their challenge because a lot of people, well, wait, uh, what are you doing? This is not normal. M most agents come in here, they just rattle their brains off and there's nothing, there's no order or semblance to what they're doing. No, you're different. You're coming in with an organized, powerful presentation that's going to lead them down a path of signing that contract. And they're not used to that. So as a result, they're reacting to other experiences they may have had in their life. Now, it doesn't have to be real estate. It could be any experience. Could be just a terrible salesperson at Best Buy or the um, or the department store. Whatever the case might be, they're going through experiences and they're not ready for this. However, as great presenters, we're setting people up. The next thing to do is ask challenging questions. People respond to challenges. People respond to challenges, asking challenging questions. Mr. Seller, just a question for you. What is, what's going to happen if we don't sell the property in the time that you want? That's a challenging question. What's going to happen if we don't sell the property? All right. So ask people, don't hesitate to ask people challenging questions. You have to think, is this going to be a challenge if we overprice it in the marketplace in this particular conditions? They need to be moved in this particular time frame. Is it going to be a challenge? You better believe it will be. So just think about that. Just think about the logic of that, right? Don't worry about the outcome. They'll sign the contract. I promise you 85, 90% of the time 
if you go through what I'm sharing with you. At the end of the day, we have to challenge people. Why do you feel I'm not worth 7% commission? I don't quite understand. Well, Mike, you know, all of those things, you know, I mean, everybody else is charging four and 5%, you're charging seven. Well, I, I understand that. I did go through my plan, my marketing plan of action with you. Why don't we do this? I'm gonna challenge you, Mr. Seller, and would you mind playing along with me? Well, what are you talking about? Well, there's 20 items here on my marketing plan of action. Here's what I'd like to suggest you do. Here's the paper, and I turn the paper around, and I show it to them. Here, what I'd like you to do, here's a pen, I'd like you to circle the things that you don't want me to do on that marketing plan of action. Let me see what I can do to bring that commission down. Sound fair? They take the pen, they start, well, do you have to actually prospect uh, three, four hours a day? Uh, well, you know, this prospecting thing doesn't work. You know, why are you gonna even do that? Chain, take that off of there. Well, Mr. Seller, sorry, I can't take that one off there because that's one of the more valuable areas that I used to expose your property to the neighborhood and to the world. You can't keep me from doing that. Pick another one. Now they can go down the list a hundred times. I'm gonna go through it a hundred times and I'm gonna disagree with them because I'm gonna agree that these things are very, very important. So I'm gonna challenge you with them. I'm gonna challenge them. Mr. Seller, really in all sincerity, did you want me not to do any of these things? Or Mr. Seller, you really don't want me to prospect? I don't understand. Tell me why, all right? So you're challenging them with questions and they like to get challenged okay it's cool it's pretty fun once you guys start doing a lot of these things you can have a lot of fun with it make direct challenges to individuals with eye contact really mr seller you want me to not do that really you want me not to uh you really want me not to do any of this marketing that i'm going to be planning on doing here really mr seller you want me to price it fifty thousand dollars over the market all right, so you give direct challenges to individuals within the framework of your meeting. Now you might be with the husband and wife and you might be thinking, well, Mike, they gotta be on the same page when they're with me. They might be thinking the husband's thinking like the wife and the wife is thinking like the husband or partner, whatever the deal is, there's two people there. Let's assume that. And whether it's a one-on-one -on -one individual, whoever makes the question, creates the question or the challenge, then hit them with it directly. Bill, come on, are you gonna actually let Nancy stay back here while you move up and relocate to the new house and keep the kids here so you can keep them in school? Why don't you guys want to move together? Are you kidding me? I've done that many times. No problem, okay? But use that point with your hand gestures. Bill, come on, really? All right, eye contact, questions. So a couple of the, and you gotta have guts guys to do these. You have to have the guts to make this happen. There's a misspelling. You have to have guts. Well, yeah, you have to have the guts, all right? But either way, it's, you know what I mean. You have to have guts to do these things. Be cool with it. You know what? When you challenge people, they respect you. They may not like it. I, I'm, not, I'm gonna say, a lot of times people don't like exactly my approach, but I'm gonna tell you, they respect it, and when they use it, they get the results, so long as they use it. At the end of the day, my belief is what I'm teaching you is what it is. And this is the best thing. I wasn't closing 50% of the time. When I first started, I was closing 10%. I got better 20, 30, 40, 50. Then eventually I got to 90% in, in a very, very short period of time. It's very important to believe that. And I have the guts. My belief is I have to have the guts to tell you that. Whether you like it or not, if you don't like doing this stuff, then don't do it. I really don't care. I know what it has done for myself, but more importantly, I know what it's done for many other people have used this information. You have to have the guts to use this stuff in front of people. You have to have the guts to challenge people and people appreciate that. Again, they may not like it, but they'll respect it. And when people respect it, the chances of them signing that contract are radically higher than ever before. I promise you, they're going to walk out, you know, wow, uh, did we do the right thing? Is, is this guy going to really do those things? I mean, gosh, he, he really sounded good. Okay. And the husband or the wife is going to say, yep, the partner, whatever. They're going to say, yep, they're, they're good. Okay. And they appreciate that. And they respect that energy. This goes back to physical energy. I'm on number eight. 
pure physical energy is attractive in our culture okay if you walk through the house and you're slouching over okay don't do that guys walk with power walk with your posture step a little bit quicker if you're not a fast walker well then speed it up okay just walk fast people like when you walk fast hi thanks for having me over okay now it doesn't mean if you're talking with an older crew of people or a more amiable style that you're gonna speed walk by them or speed talk them that's put that's pure energy which is great but you're gonna kill the rapport as we talked about before power charisma sexuality all of these factors in this philosophy of presentation are extremely powerful when we're delivering a presentation now when I say the word sexuality that has nothing to do with male female or anything crazy or obscene it has nothing to do with that sexuality in and of itself is a persuasive mechanism that people want to buy so I think in the better way to say this is that when you're dressed as a power player okay that is very in an in sensual way for people to buy you they look at you and they see how you're dressed male female okay guys you walk in with a power tie on a nice suit press shirt you look good you look like a million bucks or two or three or ten okay that's very very persuasive and it's very sensual in the vein of what that really means from that perspective I'm not talking about physical sensuality or sexuality here guys please don't let your minds wander down this other road all right but keep that in mind number nine and then we'll wrap this up with a couple of quick points utilization whatever happens in the environment find a way to support find a way to make it support your outcome okay how can I use this if it's an uncomfortable situation I can't tell you how many times I walked into presentations with the expectation of putting my stuff on a table and there was no table in the house to put down what did I have to do I had to stand up and deliver my presentation which frankly don't tell anybody is really a great way to make a presentation you get in you get out you're very you know how it's like when you're in a meeting and you're standing up talking to people you're pretty much ready to leave the meeting but you're gonna get the job done while you're in the meeting but you're not gonna hang out I believe when you sit down it becomes a very comfortable situation I'm not saying not to do that but you gotta be you gotta be in a place where if you have to adjust you gotta be flexible so whatever happens in your environment if the water spills all over your contracts shake them off Nancy can you give me some towels please I don't want to let the ink dry get too wet here because your name's all over this contract and when you sign it I don't want it to be missing all right so find a way to support your outcome and understand that it's a great way to utilize the things that could have uh, go go wrong and the last thing guys here is have fun all right have fun with what you're doing this ain't heart surgery okay those folks that are doing heart surgery you know for them I'm sure it's fun I don't I don't I wouldn't disagree that it's probably not because that's what their passion is that's why they're very very good at that work but what we do relative or compared to that is a lot different but don't look at it like you know this is the end all and and you're gonna look bad or you're gonna feel terrible or if you don't get the deal signed you're gonna feel weird listen just walk in and have some fun with these people okay have some fun in your presentation again just a good smile is good enough to get the ball rolling and having some fun so some quick tips here before we wrap up cut any internal dialogue it decreases your effectiveness when you have a lot of internal dialogue how do I look how do I sound am I gonna do this right am I gonna do it? I've never done this before you have these internal dialogues just relax know and review if you've done the uh, if you've done the preparation in advance you've done the practice in advance don't worry about anything just go do your job as I said earlier fly the plane focus on the outside in other words focus on your prospect don't focus on yourself just do your job you're gonna be perfectly fine and one point on this guys is one of the things I learned from presentations years ago is that your audience okay very typically does not know what you're gonna say They're, they they have no idea what you're gonna do in that presentation so there's no need for you to even worry about it even if you went in and read your your presentation in reverse that's what they thought that's what your presentation was you might think it's not it's in reverse but it doesn't really matter 
So don't worry about that, meaning if you, if you, if you worry about it too much, you're going to get a lot of internal dialogue going on and looking for perfection. Just go do your job. Stay fully associated, as I mentioned before. Very, very important. Very committed. Very powerful around that area. And rev up the pressure in your body and pour it onto your audience. The energy will come back to you. Again, bring it out in the physiology. Okay? Sit there. Okay? Push into them sometimes. But don't sit back too far, right? But if you need to sit back for a second, sit there for a second, then come back into them. Say, so Mr. Seller, it's the best decision you can make. I am not going to leave here until you sign the contract because, frankly, nobody's going to do a better job than me. You do agree with me, don't you? I didn't upswing. You do agree with me, don't you? No, I downswung. You do agree with me, don't you? And they're going to say, yes. Great. Sign the contract. Please. All right. So guys, make this happen. Understand these 10 points. As I mentioned in the beginning of this, make this list. Okay. You'll have a doc. You'll have this document. The next one is going to be wrapping around uh, some areas of affirmations, which I'll get into at another video later. But for the most part, understand that these 10 steps will help you to increase the effectiveness and the results that you get on presentations. Two, make sure that you, again, as I was going to say a second ago, make this list of all of these 10 areas. And then before you walk into a presentation, look at them. And when you leave, go through them and scale yourself on a scale of one to 10. How was I on each one of these areas? And you watch your business go through the ceiling, your effectiveness will go crazy, and you're gonna be a happy, wealthy, and terrific salesperson, I know that. So, go make it happen. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, mike at mikehusson.com. It's mike at mikehusson.com. Now, go out there, make it a great day, and have some fun, and make some great presentations. Thanks so much.